Okay, so Zyke has sent me a USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure, but this is not like any normal enclosure. So I've got a basic M.2 SATA enclosure, which is fine, but not particularly fast. I've got this Oracle one, which is definitely faster USB-C, and this takes NVMe drive, so I'll be able to do a direct comparison with the Zyke drive. So let's show you what it's like. So this is in an aluminium enclosure, but it's also got a Perspex case on it, so it's not gonna scratch your desk or anything. It also comes with a cable that you can link to your laptop. Now this is obviously very short, so they've thought of this, and they've also given you a longer cable as well. So let's plug this in. So into my MacBook, which does have USB 4. So we'll see what it transfers like. So the drive's shown up here. Let's just grab this 10 gig file and pop it onto the drive and see how fast it is. Well, you can see it's just super, super quick. So let's do that same test on this Oracle one. I can use the same USB-C cable, so let's eject it first of all. And to take the drive out, all you do is just flip this part up. So there is no tool to take this off. Uh, you can see it's got a thermal pad which comes into contact with the drive, although I've got a sticker on my drive. It's got a little rubber part that you just pull out and you can get access to your drive. The Oracle is also no tools. So that comes apart. And there's no uh, heat dissipation on this, but I haven't really had problems with it. It's been fine. And then pop that bit on. And I'll use the same USB-C cable. First of all, I'm going to need to delete the file. Let's get out of here because I don't really have much space on this Mac. It is a only a 256 Mac, so I'm always having to delete things. Let's grab this file and drag it in and see how long it takes on the Oracle drive. Still pretty quick, but noticeably slower. And it's finished. So that was 5.27 seconds for the Zyke drive, and for the Oracle it took 11.92, so pretty much twice as long on the Oracle. So I'm gonna do some speed tests, but before I do that, let's just have a look at their site. So Zyke drive is faster than the current fastest Thunderbolt 3 SSD, with a read speed of 3.8 gig and a write speed of 3.1 gig and it only takes five minutes to transfer a one terabyte file. So we scroll down through, so they talk about 40 gigabits per second. So it's got an ASM main control chip. Zyke is the first brand AS Media has cooperated with on this chip. It is a true USB 4 SSD enclosure. So the two cables, the very short one and the 50 centimeter one they show here, and the four different sizes, so 2230 right up to 2280. World's first and fastest USB 4 SSD drive. Aircraft grade aluminium with a wide heat sink. Because NVMe drives can get hot, so this is obviously gonna help that. And they talk about compatibility with different operating systems. I will be putting a different operating system on it. But you could use it as a storage drive, so you know, for video editing and things like that. And they show a chart, and this is the only one that's listed as PCIe Gen 4, and it meets the USB 4 protocol. And the sizes are on here if you're interested, and the weight. Now they've got some speed tests, but I'll be doing some speed tests with Crystal Disk Mark on a Windows device, but I'm gonna use uh, Blackmagic on this Mac. So let's have a look. So let's compare it to the drive. So if I do uh, target drive, so this is my Mac drive. So let's hit start. So we've got 2182.8 write speed and 2920.3 read speed. And as you can see from here, it pretty much covers everything apart from the two 12Ks on H.265. So these four here, which makes it easy. So now let's try it on the Patriot Drive. So file, select target drive, Patriot Drive, and start. And let's stop that and compare the results. So in this test, the Mac was faster, so write speed 2182 versus 1644, and read speed 2920 versus 2531. We've got to remember that the Mac drive is physically built onto the board, so it has a big advantage. But it's worth noting that pretty much the same level of support, there's just that one X on there, which it didn't quite meet. 
this is the Patriot drive, which was a £20 NVMe drive. So maybe I'll try uh, a faster drive, maybe on one of my Windows devices. I seem to remember there being a fancy drive inside this Geekom. Uh, it's a Ryzen 9 mini PC. Okay. Oh, more screws. Yeah, I'm going to take this bit off to get it. So there's the drive. So it's an Acer in this one. Okay, well unfortunately that's not going to work. I'm going to have to try Linux. Maybe Windows doesn't like it that I'm using a different method of booting. Exactly the same results from this Geekom Mini Air 12 doing exactly the same thing. So taking the drive out, putting it in the caddy and trying to boot Windows. So I'm going to download Crystal Disk Mark. Okay, and let's run that. It's already looking pretty decent. Okay, so that's all the results. So now what I'm going to do is install Windows to this drive, but in the caddy and see how we get on with that. I've got Ventoy on this USB stick and this is the caddy with the drive in. And let's hit enter or hit down and then enter. And we're going to install Windows 11. Okay, so maybe I won't be doing that. Windows cannot be installed to this disk. Setup does not support configuration of or installation to disk connected through USB or 1394. Okay, so I've chosen this as an external drive. So this is the D drive. Let's hit all, and this is inside the Zyke case. So let's compare the results. So on the left hand side is in the Zyke caddy, and on the right hand side are the results when it was actually inside the PC, not this one inside the Geekom Air 12 using its own PCIe slot. So read speed 3262 versus 3423, so very similar. 2194 versus 2205, very similar again. Not much difference on this one, 335 versus 389. Quite different on this one, 11 versus 56. And then on the right speeds, uh, it's almost double the speed on the internal drive. So 1563 versus 3007. Uh, 968 versus 1948, so again double the speed pretty much. Not quite so much double the speed on this one, 170 versus 287. And on this one, very different, 979 versus 115. So as expected, it is still faster inside the device, so in the actual PCIe slot on the motherboard. But these are very, very good results for an external drive. So I've got Linux installed on this, KDE Neon, and I've been using it inside the GMK tech case. But I'm now going to boot it as an external drive from this little Geekon mini PC. So I pressed F7 to get the boot menu. So all I have to do now is select the drive and hit enter and that will start to boot up KDE. And this works great and works super fast, I'll show it in a minute, in this budget N100 mini PC which doesn't have USB 4. But strangely both of these USB 4 devices won't boot Linux uh, from this external drive. But as soon as I put it in the Air 12 it booted up straight away. So I'm not sure if this is an AMD because there's a Ryzen 9 in the one on the left and a Ryzen 7 in on the right, and as I say, this is an N100. The operating system was installed when it was inside this casing, so it should be more compatible with that. Although I have whipped it out and put it into an external drive, so I have changed things. But I'll try it with another Intel PC, but I'll show this first of all. So if I just start clicking on things, so settings, discover store, files, Firefox, terminal, Raspberry Pi, switch emulator, Waydroid, play on Linux, Chrome driver, and the speed test. Uh, you'll see that it, it runs through them super quick. So everything is launched incredibly quick and it's lovely and snappy. This is Waydroid, which is Android. It runs really well on this. Uh, so I was playing around with it and uh, yeah, it's lovely and responsive. And I've never been able to get it to run on my Raspberry Pi, but on this, it's, uh, it's been great. So I don't know what I said yes to then. Uh, so let's go season one and let's just show you that it is working. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do both of those at the same time. I remember this is an M100 mini PC emulating Android within the system, running in this external drive and everything seems to be working really nicely. Let's close that down. So I've used KDismark to do this speed test, but uh, 
This doesn't have a USB 4 socket on the front of this PC. So I want to do a comparison with this on an older one and a newer USB 4 PC. So let's shut this one down. So this B-Link PC, which is also Intel, has launched fine. And here's the speed tests, which are very similar to the results I've just had. But I think I've got a faster connection possibly on the back, so let's try that. Yeah, it is. The Thunderbolt 4 socket is the one on the back. But as soon as I use the Thunderbolt 4 for booting, obviously it's fine for data, but as soon as I use it for booting, I get this message, which was the same. So it's nothing to do with AMD or Intel. It's just the fact that it won't boot from a Thunderbolt 4 socket. Interesting. So I just did a little test with a USB-A to C adapter. So this obviously won't be USB 4 now. And it's booted fine on the GM Takeac PC, which it wouldn't boot on before. And it's because both of these, uh, well, they, all their USB-C sockets are USB 4. So it wouldn't boot on that from USB-C, whereas this doesn't have USB 4 at all. And the B-Link, which I've packed away now, um, that had one of each. So it doesn't seem to like to boot from USB 4. And it gets recognized as a different device. So if I start this one up, pressing F7 on boot gives me this. So you can see GoPod enclosure shows up. But I don't think it does on USB 4. So let's start it up from the USB 4 socket. So power on and start hitting F7. Yeah, it recognizes it as something else. Look, APS SE 20G. So it definitely treats it differently, and that might be one of the reasons why it's not using it as a boot method. But there's probably a way around it, and it would mean that I'd get much faster speeds. As a drive, just superb, really, really fast. It would be good to run Ventoy from this for very fast installations, and uh, I like the way that I can run some operating systems from it. I'd love to be able to run an operating system from this drive through my Mac, maybe run Linux on an external drive, but I'm not sure if that's possible at the moment. I remember looking at it quite a while ago. But uh, thanks to Zyke for sending me this. It's a superb drive, really well designed, super fast, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it in the future. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.